Hey guys, Eric Watson here, the PC editor over at Leviathan.com. I'm looking to give you all a little help on Transistor, specifically getting the achievement for uh, winning five battles with ten limiters in place. Limiters are uh, very much like the gods worked in Bastion, where you can really choose uh, your own difficulty scaling by uh, basically just picking uh, exactly how you want, uh, how much stronger you want your enemies to be. So. You can have a uh, process respawning from cells in more time, no longer get that nice little uh, emergency turn at the end. Uh, some of them are pretty minor, and others, like the uh, the process will strike twice as much power, or they'll spawn in greater numbers, or you just have less options to equip your functions are pretty uh, devastating. Um, and right now I haven't even equipped this one yet because I'm going to be showing you exactly uh, which skills that I used uh, in order to get the achievement. Now keep in mind, I am in recursion mode right now. You can try, uh, certainly, to uh, to get the achievement in uh, regular play, although uh, you probably have to have been using uh, limiters as soon as you get them, because uh, most likely you will not be uh, too high a level upon uh, actually completing the game. Whereas if you use limiters, and then once you're in recursion mode and get all your skills, uh, you actually start doubling up on skills and that gives you a ton of options to uh, use skills in multiple places as well as uh, doubling up on their functions you can actually upgrade a skill with another skill which by the way is another achievement so we are going to be building a 10 limiter build and we're gonna start with life tap because it's insanely strong it does 150 base damage and it actually takes less uh, turn planning cost than breach which only does 100 damage which is uh, breaches the one at the beginning of the game that does the um, kind of beam attack with the sword. So life tap's amazing, and it, it does life steal, but the life steal is just not really anything <laughs> unless you upgrade it specifically for that. Uh, putting it in a passive slot is kind of nice too. It gives you a ton of extra life, but uh, we're gonna need to make that our primary attack for now. We are also going to be doubling down on this skill because we want to be firing it off as much as possible. So we need to put it in John. This is extremely important. You need to be able to instant fire that life tap so you can constantly do that damage around you. It is very nice, especially because the process will be dropping those shielded uh, cells and you need to grab those in a few seconds or else the enemy is just going to respawn again and you are in trouble. The second upgrade is a bit debatable. It's kind of nice to put Crash in there just so you can stun guys constantly, especially against those damn fetch process that do so much damage and are very quick. I like putting uh, I like putting Load in there because it ups the damage and actually ups the uh, radius in which you can do it around you, so it gives you a little more option to make sure you get everybody in uh, that life tap is very important. Uh, your two other abilities are basically just going to be used to make your primary life tap attack that much stronger, uh, which we're going to use mask because turning that on makes your next attack do 200% more damage. If you have a second mask, um, I would use it. <laughs> Again, this is recursion mode. This is, uh, I believe I'm level 25 right now. So I've got quite a bit of second skills. It's not totally necessary. You can substitute it for uh, different skills, but this allows us to basically make stealth damage uh, another 50% stronger. And finally, the other important skill is Void. Void is a very nice AOE debuff spell, or uh, sorry, function, that will weaken everybody for our uh, mask and then our life tap, allowing us to do a ton of damage uh, with just three skills. Now the other thing I like to do with Void is attach the little grenades, spark to them because that will stack the effect of it times two, which is pretty amazing. Two times the Void, uh, so even more debuffing, so you're just stripping those enemies right down and uh, just depancing them. <laughs> and finally we only have two memory left because uh, that one limiter um, basically takes away 12 functions worth of memory. So instead of trying to shoehorn in a fourth ability that would be more situational, I actually like to give myself the shield passive from Bounce. It's that five second uh, deflection shield. Just because a lot of times, and the enemy does so much damage, um, it's amazing how much that shield can really save you. 
especially if you've got really good situational awareness. Now, just obviously certain enemies are going to give you fits more than others, and unfortunately in recursion mode you just really can't plan on what you're going to face because it's going to be different. But uh, this should be a relatively uh, good build. So now that we've got our thing in there, we can turn on our final uh, limiter, which uh, I really hate this one, the philosophy behind it, just changing your... Um, functions overloads them because I think a big part of the fun of the game is being able to change your functions but it certainly does work as making the game that much harder so let's see how this works in action we are oh dear how far are we in here round and round. maybe halfway through Again, this is in recursion mode not now you can see and we want to try to get in uh, turn-based mode as quickly as possible. And already we're facing uh, some different enemies than we would normally. So we're going to need to void them up. And again, that shield's great at avoiding that haircut blast, which is, oh, that's nasty. We're going to mask. And look at that, how big that radius is. And you can see how much damage that does. Unfortunately, I didn't get that man uh, in the void but it does 1200 damage <laughs> so I mean it will just obliterate everything and the idea here now I can immediately use that to break open the cells which is important let him cast a spell so now we can capture them in the void and then one tap will just do insane amounts of damage even against the very hardy late game enemy man. But you still have to be aware of what everybody's doing, and you really need to be in turn based mode as much as possible. I mean, if you've played any of Transistor, you pretty much know that to be true. So, mask, and now this. So, that's when you do the 1200. Um, you have to have the mask and the void. Catch them both in that because unmasking will give you a massive amount of damage as well as the debuff from the void. It'll just kill everything. <laughs> uh, except maybe the jerk. Uh, you might need to do like two or three taps, but uh, should be good enough. And then it's definitely worth being able to immediately do this so I can turn on. And look how much damage I just took. It just. <laughs> it's pretty hard. Uh, but you need to be able to break those cells open quickly, which is why I think you need the jaunt on the life tap in order to be able to do that. It's going to take a couple life taps to take that one down. Be in trouble if we can't take that guy. There we go. Alright, so now we need to spend, fortunately, oops, can I run this way? Okay, catch those guys in there. We can mask. Let's see how far we can get with our mask. Can't quite grab the creep over there. And walls will just bring you all kinds of fits, too. Because it's just, I mean, you're just going to have to roll with it somehow. You can at least kill those guys. Don't rely on that life tap lifesteal, either. Let's see. Oh, that's what it is. It's a fence right there. Fortunately, we can't grab that cell down there. Oh, I can't. <laughs> it drives me crazy. I can't see those. Uh, see, it respawned the uh, the man down there, which is definitely not good. Use the walls to your advantage. It's gonna take three boys to take him out. I missed that. 0.5 seconds. I probably should have just put myself a mask up. Okay. Oh, yeah, they get attached. Oh, see that haircut follows you. You don't, definitely don't want none of that madness. <laughs> Alright. Let's try and tap to get rid of him. Oh, that's not going to be enough. You can't do that one. What if we move here first? This is freaking creeps. There we go. Get those guys. And mask. And then get a good tap in there. That should kill most of these things. It's all you. Okay, let's just 
try and break these guys up one at a time. Luckily, the mans are the mans, the men's, <laughs> whatever you call those haircut guys, pretty good about uh, just kind of waiting it out. Uh, I'm much more worried about the fast guys that continually hunt you. You just have to be aware of those haircuts are nasty, especially because. See, that's almost worth doing that. Life tap uh, near them will just ruin your day. Because they do a ton of damage. Although they will do damage to the enemies as well, which is nice. And one of those. Alright. Maybe that's all they want. You can see you get 32% increased experience, which you should be uh, getting pretty good, even if you're not using quite all 10. Like I said, I think the most uh, difficult limiters are the ones that uh, lower your memory, because another 12 worth of functions would really help us out. Uh, with that, if I were doing that, I would probably add Jaunt to my uh, fourth ability to give me some mobility, and then an upgrade that would allow me to probably do damage with Jaunt. I especially like adding uh, Purge to Jaunt, just because every time you Jaunt, it makes a, a little heat-seeking poison missile go after an enemy, which is kind of nice. You can just teleport around and do that damage in real time. And then just adding more passive abilities is always great. Breach will allow you to um, do maybe one more tap than you would normally, which can be a huge lifesaver. Um, Flood, you can regenerate life points if you're spending more time just in real-time combat. Probably my favorite one is actually using uh, Spark as a, uh, as a passive ability, because that will spawn that copy when you're attacked, which can also be extremely useful, especially combined when using that shield. Should be another one just like this, other side of the tower. We can show one or two more combat, but you'll get the idea of how this uh, particular build Ready works. But mostly, the idea no is lift, okay. you just have one primary attack that you can spam over and over again. All right, let's check across Life tap being really the strongest and most efficient. And then your two other abilities, mask and void, are just there to make that attack that much stronger. And then uh, you've got the jaunt on there so that you can fire it off like as you need to. If you're really finding yourself in trouble we'll using it, I would take off that load upgrade so and put in crash, because that should stun your enemies around you for a second or two, which given that you're instantly firing it will be certainly enough to like push back any fetch guys and whatnot. Right now, those are the guys hey, I fear boys. the most. Been a while. And the lady or nothing. The lady's a bit... Ooh, we can get two of them in there. Simply because... As soon as you do something, they move, but luckily, you can see there, you're really just doing that one ability. Okay, let's get him. Alright, let's get the other young lady. Try to wait until that mask respawns before you go into turn, but sometimes you won't have that luxury. Hammer that A button, because that life tap is pretty strong. Which I'm thinking will be pretty soon. As long as you're not First fighting a bunch of fetch in a combination of... Probably the worst thing is when you have a bunch of cheerleaders. Because um, life tap doesn't really discriminate in that way. It just tries to hit everybody. <laughs> Some kind of break room up there. We're on the top level. Oldest archives. Photo op. And you want to also try and obviously get people close together as possible, so that you can be super efficient. You're done. Oh, I know I'm done. See, that just wrecks everything. But you really need to be able to get that instant attack. Now, see, I wish I could have waited another few seconds, but you really don't want to take any more damage than you have to. Oh dear. Almost hit a uh, haircut, I believe. That would have been nasty. Oh, 
Nope. Okay, we lost the void. Here's an example of how to adapt. And hit turn soon enough. I'm trying to wait till Mass comes back. What happened there? Actually, it doesn't matter. Clucker! So here's also where playing in recursion mode. What do they do with those snapshots? I just picked up all those cells. Is an advantage because well, uh, we can find up here. you double up on those skills. So even though it's gone, my voids, so you're thinking, oh man, panic mode, because it's gone and it'll be gone for a while. <laughs> and I lose both it and the, uh, the upgrade I used for it, so these uh, the spark grenade. But as you can see, I actually have a second void and a second grenade, which is really why I recommend waiting until you're in recursion mode and you've leveled up a bit, at least before taking on all full 10. So you can literally just set everything up again. Now, if you die in the very next fight, then you're going to be in some trouble. <laughs> but the achievement is only for winning five fights. You can see I've already done three. So the idea is this will get you to five fights. Um, you know, player skill and all that will certainly play into it. <laughs> and just the random nature of which enemies you're going to fight as well. Oh, us. Quite hit that fetch. That's annoying. Oh man, he's gonna heal. What a jerk. Fortunately, one of those cells as well. Yep, he came back. That's probably one of the more annoying aspects. Is the uh... oh, can't get that creep really. Can't get that creep. They are just far enough apart. That is terribly annoying. Huh. Well, can we move and then let's. Out of our way. Okay. Run, 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 run. Oh, there's a fetch. There, now we can get all those taps in there. And unfortunately, you'll notice tap does uh, swing him backwards, so you do have to kind of compensate for that. Can we reach this one in time? Yes. That's that. So you really have to know that maybe your last tap might not hit somebody that's at the far edge of it, which is another reason I like putting that load on there. Should be some kind of override. Like that one. Should be. That's two. Big door downstairs ought to be open now. Take us straight to Asher and Grant's hideout. I believe there will be. I think this should be our fifth one right here. Looks like Grant has other visitors. Well, we're not waiting. Sure not. Well, we're gonna want to hit that cheerleader for sure. up, jerk. Dude, we'll do a lot of damage to you. So part of that is just trying... Oh, I risked that too much. <laughs> trying to get them together. Oh, get out of there. Come on, don't disrupt me. Oh, dear. <laughs> Those, uh, I think it's the snapshots that do that. That is nasty. Oh, void. We still have mask. That one. That one. Don't disrupt me. Man, now we're in trouble. Not being able to do the turn is pretty much the worst. Oh dear. <laughs> Alright, straight up failure. Got which direction I was going in. Found something. Those. That takes you back to this one. Oh, damn it, he was masked. 
use us. So obviously being disrupted was extremely painful in that build, because you need to be able to go into turn-based mode. Even though you can fire this guy off, and switching it to, uh, you can see now we're fighting different enemies. Come on. Uh, putting Crash in there would be useful because it would knock everybody back. Once again, shall we? Let's see if we this one a little easier. The big door downstairs ought to be open now. Oh, being able to go into turn base mode is out. pretty nasty. Looks like Grant has other visitors. Oh, they got wise to me already. Now, is he already in shielded mode? Dang. Well, we're not waiting. Turn off shield. There we go. Let's fly. You can use stealth defensively as well. I see a chance because it'll last a while. Shit. That disruption is just awful. <laughs> Ruins my day. Oh, come on, I can tap not be 0.9 seconds, really. Oh. Well. Alright. Finish this off. Take so many taps. Alright, so disruption is certainly bad news. Definitely don't want to be caught in that. There you go, there's your five wins. <laughs> Not the most elegant way of doing it, but certainly being able to complete it with ten limiters. And you can double up on more of your favorites. For when you die, and you will die. <laughs> now there's just an example of one of the combos you can use. And uh, yeah, good luck with uh, Transistor, getting all those achievements. I uh, recommend doing your limiters at least your 10 limiters in recursion mode when you've got some redundancies and some additions to add up. But uh, life tap, instant fire is a great ability, and then using mask and void to help pump it up to do an insane amount of damage is good stuff. You can check out my review of Transistor on the site leviathan.com. I'm Eric Watson. You can follow me on Twitter at RogueWatson. Stay tuned to Leviathan Network for more awesome videos. Thanks, guys.